What's up, everybody? Happy Friday to you. You know, I, I got to get something off my chest. And, you know, every like most people who follow my content, you know that I was deplatformed from LinkedIn February of this year. They literally waited until the last day of Black History Month to deplatform me for changing my pronouns to common sense. Apparently, you can be unicorn her, but you can't be common sense on LinkedIn. But... After that, I opened up another account with LinkedIn to rebuild an audience and, 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 and drive my business on LinkedIn. And within a week, they shut the page down. They restricted it. Now, I find it really queer, though, that the business page that is not associated with my profession, which is for financial advising, that is still up. And it leads me to wonder, is LinkedIn okay with me being on their platform as a business, a small business owner, but they're not okay with me being on their platform as a financial advisor. And since 2020, in my opinion, LinkedIn has perpetuated narratives about the black reality. They have boosted content creators that are on the victimhood side. And a lot of those content creators, I was not even following, but somehow through LinkedIn's algorithms, their content ended up in my timeline. It's almost like, oh, this is a black user. They need to see this, right? So a lot of my content on LinkedIn was non-inflammatory. It wasn't near, it was not even close to as inflammatory as some of the content that they were pushing from certain creators that were more on the DEI SJW side. Um, I mean, I'm talking about, I saw one, the guy that actually got me restricted, a black guy or whatever, this SJW weirdo who's just trying to jump on the bandwagon of ignorance to make some coins, right? He posted, white people make me nervous, right? White people make me nervous never got restricted that post stayed up right but the minute i changed my pronouns to common sense now all of a sudden it's problematic but it wasn't it's not just them restricting my main account my angie c account it was the fact that they restricted and it's not even that they restricted the new account which is the new account that i created you know for my advisory business it was the fact that they have not restricted the small business account at all. So to me, it seems like LinkedIn is acting in the interest, not of their community guidelines, which are convoluted, change every day, and to me are direct, a direct infringement of the First Amendment. No, forget about that, though. It's that your community guidelines don't apply to everybody, number one. But number two, it seems like to me that the only way that LinkedIn is okay with me using their platform is if I am a non-professional person, not a financial advisor. Because unfortunately for sites like LinkedIn and some of these governmental site agency group who want to perpetuate narratives about black people that were not intelligent, that we were hopeless, you know, that like seeing professional black people, unfortunately, is a threat to those narratives in, in professional spaces. They love to see us small business owners before they see us making moves in a corporation or making moves in a business in the advisory space. And, and it's so revealing when people talk about racism and obstacles, the very same people who claim they are your friends and they're your champions, they're the ones holding your people back. Like, I mean, LinkedIn really hurt my business when they restricted me and, and because they are the monopoly on business networking. There's other business networking sites, but none of them are as big as LinkedIn. 
So I say that to say I'm calling them out because for some reason you'd rather have me on your platform as a small business owner than as a professional financial advisor. And that leads into question, are you doing this to protect your community guidelines or are you doing this to protect maybe some of these bigger firms that can't get an asset like me?